more than anything. Do not let me speak today from human wisdom in my own understanding. I stand as a vessel to release something new and different in our lives. So don't let me be usual. Because you're unusual, God. So I surrender my mind, my will, and my emotions to honor you. Would you say amen, church? Amen. I want to... um start a new series today. It's called 44 Fire. And what it is is 40 minutes um, that we're going to be talking about, um, you know, four different aspects that will change your life. And then, um, of course, we're talking about fire. Everybody say fire. Hey, how many of you love to sit around a campfire? Be honest. How many of you love to get the smoke just blow all in your face? You know, burn your marshmallows up? Amen. Overcook your hot dog. Talking about food again already, right? How I many of you know there's some things that happen, there's some things that go on, and a lot of times, you know, I hear people talk about fire, and I've been talking about this, but, um, um, you know, sometimes we pray for God to send fire when we have to understand it's our responsibility to catch fire. So I'd like for you to look at everybody around you right now and say it's time... Come on, y'all, can't be quiet on me today. Come on, say, it's time for you to catch fire. Now, if you're here today and you say, you know, I'm, I'm really good, you know, I, I got all of God in my life, I already got this God thing figured out, this word's for you. Okay, if you're here today and you say, you know, uh, I, I don't know whether I want any God. I don't know whether I want anything like that at all. You know, I, I, everything I've seen of God's been kind of crazy. And let me ask you a question. How many of you have seen some crazy people do some crazy things for God? Well, this word's for you. If you get easily offended at things, especially when it concerns the word, this word's for you. Are you ready? Whether you just got saved or you've been saved for a hundred years, this word's for you. And I hope you're ready for it. Let me get my phone real quick. I got a verse of scripture. We're going to change things up. Are you ready, Christina? Go to Ecclesiastes 11, verse 4. I'm dropping one on her, in the, and I'm going to do it in the New King James, and then I'm going to read it in a couple of different translations. Um, I was listening to, to um, you know, the pastor at Elevation Church the other morning while I was doing my workout. How many of you know, I, I, I made a decision that when I do my workout, if I pay attention to time, it defeats me. But if I pay attention to something else, it does not. Because there's some, how many of you do cardio at all? Does anybody do any cardio, walking or anything like that? How many of you know that um, you know, a 10-minute walk on a stair stepper can actually look and feel like 45 minutes if you get your mind wrong? So what we're going to deal with today is how to keep our minds right. And he was preaching on this, and, and when he said it, I'm going to give him credit for it because nowadays, you know, you've got to be careful you get sued for sharing a word that somebody else shares if you don't give them credit, and we don't want that. You know, they call it pastoral plagiarism. Y'all think I'm joking, right? I'm not. I know of several pastors who have lost their jobs because of this. And, uh, but anyway, it says this in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 4. He who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Are you ready? Listen to it in the Amplified Bible. He who observes the wind and waits for all conditions to be favorable 
will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Everybody say amen. Listen to it in the message. I call it translation, it's paraphrase. When the clouds are full of water, it rains. And when the wind blows down a tree, it lies where it falls. Don't sit there watching the wind. Do your own work. Don't stare at the clouds. Are you ready? Is it up here? Say it with me. Get on with your life. It's amazing to me how conditions change us so much. And one of the things that, that this pastor was talking about was he said, we'll sit around and we'll watch the Weather Channel and they'll tell us something that may happen 50-50 and we'll react because there's a forecast. Come on, y'all. You, you, you know, if we get a forecast around, I never have figured this one out. Will y'all let me be weird for a minute? Never have figured it out. We'll get a chance of snow. All the bread and milk will disappear. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Give me that. <laughs> All the bread and milk will disappear. And, you know, and I walked into a store one time. We had a chance of snow coming. We can get a hurricane. The same thing happens. We get anything like that, and all the bread and milk disappears, and milk will go bad, and bread will go stale, but Twix will not. <laughs> Y'all see where I'm going, right? Now, you know, and, and I've always, you know, I, I like when something like that happens, you know, Mountain Dew will not go bad in the two-liter bottle sealed up and put in the counter. Yeah, it's already bad for you. But it's better to drink that than it is soured milk. Booyah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is we'll react to atmospheric conditions and we will react to forecasts. And a lot of times we live our lives according to this, guys. And, and what I want to do is I want to take today and I want to talk to you a little bit about setting yourself on fire and getting yourself into a new place. So this is what we're going to do. You know, I, I told the Lord yesterday, you know, when I was driving, I had to come down. Oh, that reminds me. I had to come down and visit Jan. She's in the hospital. And uh, so I was driving down, and I had some music playing and just worshiping on the way here because I need to fill my mind full of godly stuff. How many of you know I got enough worldly stuff in me to carry me for a long time? So I have to physically make the decision to listen to godly stuff so that it'll change my whole outlook on life because my mind can get messed up, but spiritual things bring me back into focus. Anybody else like that? So I was, I was listening to this, and on the way here, you know, I, I told the Lord, I said, you know, God, I'm at a point in my life to where, you know, you have, do y'all have conversations with God? Does anybody else talk to God? I do. Not complaining either. You know, but I do. I, t I talk to God. I mean, I have complained to him. He shuts me up real quick. You know, but um, tells me just do my word and it'll work. You know, he's already got the answer and the key for it. So, you know, I was telling him, you know, God, I told God, I said, you know, selling out God is easy. How many of you will say that with me? Selling out to God is easy. How many of you know selling out away from God is easy? Do you find selling out to God is easy? And I told God, I said, my problem is not selling out to you. If God was to speak to me right now and tell me and Pam to do anything, I'm being honest with you guys, other than Africa right now, we would drop it and do it. <laughs> do you follow me? I'm just, I'm cutting up, of course. Uh, we, we're ready. We're, we're at a point in our lives where we, we've just told God, God, we'll submit, we'll surrender. Whatever you want for us to do is good. So how many of you know selling out is not an issue for me? How many of you say amen to that? Selling out is not an issue. Staying sold out is. And, and this is what I told God. I said, selling out is not the problem. You know, I can do that. I can even figure it out in the natural. How many of you know we, we can do it? But staying sold out is a different story because it means that no matter what happens once you sell out, when you get in that place, if you're not careful, conditions will change wherever you go because you've got to understand there's an enemy and there's a force that's in place that you are breaking off of people. One of the biggest things I had to learn as a pastor is when I come into a place, I'm not just fighting the atmosphere that's left in the church. You know, when we walk into a place, I'm fighting the atmosphere that's left in the town because of what happened in the church. Oh, boy. So y'all see where this is going, right? So, you know, selling out is not a problem. Man, staying sold out, 
is something else. Because, you know, I, I can tell God anything. I'm, God, I'll give it all up. I'll do it all for you. But how many of you know when you move to West Virginia and you start living in the area, things change. Because now you're not stuck with the resources that you had. You're stuck with the resources that your faith can provide. So selling out to God is easy. Say it with me, y'all. Selling out is easy. Staying sold out is my problem. And I want to explain this to you before we go into this, okay? We're not praying for fire. We're not praying for God to send fire. We're, we're believing to catch fire. Can, can I, I won't take you there, but how many of you remember in the book of Acts when the day of Pentecost had fully come? They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Say it with me, y'all. Fire. So it's not God's job to set you on fire anymore. It's your job to catch fire. And the way I found that I, I have to catch fire is staying close enough to God to where my wick don't get wet. And my wood don't get soaked with the, with the conditions of the world. I was watching this show the other day and these guys were trying to start fire with wet fire material. How many of you know it's not going to happen? So here we are. We, we got this. So the, let me break it down for you. We're, we're going to be pushing you. And, and believe me, I am. I'm going to push you a little bit. Everybody say, we love you, Pastor. And now we already got the Pastor Appreciation thing out of the way. I can preach how I want to preach. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but, but this is the thing. We're, we're, we're asking you, if you will, to, do, to commit. And this is going to be a stretch, and I understand that. Commit 40 minutes a day. 40 minutes a day, to bring clarity of vision, 2020 vision, I'm asking you to spend 20 minutes in the Word and 20 minutes in worship. How many of you know it'll clear your vision? It'll clear your vision. Now, this is, I know this is stretch because some of y'all only read one verse of Scripture a day, and I'm okay with that. I'm just asking you to push yourself for more. Will anybody say Amen. Push yourself for more. And I understand this. So, so when we talk about this, it was 20 minutes in the Word and 20 minutes in worship. That song that we just listened to was 10 minutes long. That's 10 minutes of worship. So you can get music. You can download four songs. And you can worship the four songs or three songs and have your 20 minutes of worship a day. And I'll guarantee you, you text and be on Facebook more than that. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Now let me tell you what we're talking about. We're talking about prayer, fasting, worship, and the Word. Prayer focuses us to see the new atmosphere. Fasting sets me in the atmosphere. We'll talk about some of the, these as we go along. Worship stabilizes and sets that atmosphere in place. And then the Word spoken destroys illegitimate and rogue and illegal atmospheric conditions. Does everybody follow me? I'll, I'll have these. Can we print these up for next week? Can you put them on the screen next week? Because we'll go back through them. So what I'm trying to do, guys, is I've un I understand something. I am not satisfied with where I am spiritually. Is anybody else satisfied with where you are spiritually? If you are, this word is for you. Do you understand? This word is for you because I'm hungry. Do you understand? I am hungry. And, and I hear people say all the time, well, I'm hungry for more of God. No, I'm hungry to have everything that God says that we can have. How many of you saw the link that I put on my Facebook page where the woman's arm got healed? Did anybody, did anybody in here see that? A couple of you. Was that not awesome? If, if you haven't seen it, would you please look at it? Because let me tell you, the same God that heals in other countries does the same thing in this country. And the reason why it's not happening is not because of God but because of us. It's the conditions that we have set in place. Go to Philippians 3, verses 15 and 16. This is in the message translation. Paraphrase. So let's keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. How many of you want everything that God has for you? How many of you are, are tired of just getting the scraps from the table? Anybody else there? And I, I'm, I'm saying this, guys. I've seen some crazy things happen. Have, I have seen some crazy... You know, I, I shared this story here a while back, but we had a kid come up for prayer, 
in West Virginia, and it was one of those times to where, you know, we, we were just having an outpouring, man. People were getting healed. We had, we had people healed of cancer. We had people that, that uh, blood clots had left their legs in the hospital. I mean, we had awesome things happening, and, and one of the ladies in our church had bought somebody in her family that the kids, some reason his legs were turned out, and they, they were taking him to the hospital next week, and they were going to pray for it. They were going to do surgery on him to break the bones, adjust his legs in straight, and then reset the bones, screw everything together, and he was going to be, you know, in a half body cast for months to get this stuff done. And she picked him up during prayer time and brought him up front and handed him to me. And she said, would you pray? And told me what was going on and you know, and we had, I had made a table, an in-remembrance table, you know, and, and uh, the kid was kind of heavy, to be honest with you. So I took him and set him on the table and started to pray. And before the words ever come out of my mouth, she and I were watching. This is why it's important to watch and pray. Come on, y'all. Watch and pray. Watching is expectation. Praying is, is actually attaching what God says to what you're expecting. It's a sign of faith. So, you know, I know people who pray with their eyes closed, and I'm okay with that. Don't do it driving. All right, learn to pray with your eyes open. Watch and pray, because watching is expecting. So I, I, I set him down, and I started to pray. And when, when I, I mean, we were watching him. She and I was watching. And his, leg, his feet were straight out this way. And as soon as I started praying, his legs went, whoop, and straightened out. Do you remember that, Pam? I mean, and, and it caught her off guard. And she said, Pastor, did you see that? You know, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, shut your mouth, woman, shut your mouth. You know, and, but, but I mean, he was, he was totally healed, went to the doctor, did not have to have surgery. How many of you know that same God? Come on, y'all, say it with me, that same God. The same yesterday, today, and forever. That miracle-working God. Is still working miracles today. Why are we not seeing them? What are we doing? Did I tell you I'm hungry for more? I just don't want the signs and wonders. I want to get so close to God that they're just a normal activity in my life. Is there, I, I'm hungry for more. So let's keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything that God has for us. And if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. Everybody say, my vision's clearing. And it says this, you'll see it yet. I mean, you need to get excited about seeing the truth. You need to get excited about what's going to take place in you. Remember this, God. We're not going entice to do, entice God to do something that He's already done. Well, I'm going to fast till I move God. How many of you know God's already moving? Man, you don't fast to move God. You fast to move you. I mean, we, we don't pray to move God. We pray to move us out of the way of the situation to surrender. You know, when, when I, I don't pray and say, God, would you please heal somebody? I don't do that. Because the price has already been paid for healing. We don't have to beg God for what He's provided. We never have to beg for bread. Come on, y'all. I mean, seriously, we don't, we don't have to do that. So, so let's keep focused on that goal. We get lost in the effect of God, and we miss out on the fullness of God. Y'all, I just don't want to come to church and have goosebumps. Do you understand? I'm ready for a relationship like I've never had before. I'm hungry for more. And I, and I know the way to get more. I know how to do this, but it's so uncomfortable to our flesh. And I told the Lord whenever he started dealing with me about preaching this sermon, I told him, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm the shepherd, you know, and, and if, he's gonna, if, if anybody's going to get disgruntled, it needs to be me. You know, so I told him, I said, you realize Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming. Y'all get where I'm going, right? You know that Thanksgiving cruises are coming. Vacations, holidays are coming. So I asked him, do you want me to wait until after the first of the year when everybody needs to diet anyway? Come on, wouldn't that be better timing? 
in the natural? You know, because we're going to eat turkey. I'll tell you right now, Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's on. This is what he spoke to me. He said, you can wait, but you'll delay what I'm trying to do. So I'm not waiting. I'm challenging. Would you say amen? And, and I'm going to be honest with you. If you decide not to do it, I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going to get fire in my life. If you're not on fire with me, I'm going I'm to strike you off and make you burn. Amen. Come on, y'all. We get lost in the effect of God. You know, I'm not chasing effects. I'm not doing this because I want to see the effect of God take place. How many of you know what I want to see is I want to see this place, this house, this body become the people of God that we're supposed to be so when people come into this place, no lack will exist. Every physical, emotional need that they have will be met. Can I get an amen? And, you know, we need to bind up some of the things that are functioning in our own lives. We get lost in that. So let me, let me talk a little bit about fasting. Everybody say fasting. How many of you know that's just such a wonderful word to us in the church? Fasting is one of the things that the church nowadays, do, we don't understand. We're, we're, not, we're not participating in it very much. And, you know, and I've heard people say, you know, Kenneth Hagin, how many of you know who Kenneth Hagin is? Kenneth Hagin made the comment one time because when I first got saved, I thought I had to do 40-day fast. Well, you know, how many of you know I never made a 40-day fast? Y'all, 40 days of fasting, that, that's just a whole new level. I made four, but every time I, I, would, I would get to that point to where I would try to break the record, you'll see where I'm at here, right? I realized it wasn't God because now I'm just trying to set the record I've already set, so my fasting is for record instead of purpose, so I wouldn't do it. You know, and, and I was struggling with it because I had friends of mine, they would go on 40-day fast and 15-day fast and 20-day fast, and I'd watch them, man, and, and they would say, oh, you know, God is awesome, but I never saw any change take place in their life. Come on, y'all, when they quit fasting, they went right back to the same stuff. Are y'all with me? Right back to the same thing. And finally, I heard Kenneth Hagin talking about it, and he said, I mean, it was, it was amazing because I was struggling with it. How many of you know God ha has a way of getting through to us? And this is what I'm praying for. God, give me the ability to get through to you, through the anointing, to change you, to make you better than what you are, make you different than what you are. And he was standing up and he said, I know people who fast for 40 days. And he said, well, I've never been on a fast over three days in my life. And I thought, that's awesome. That gives me something to stand on. And then this is what he said. He said, I live a fasted life where I fast all the time. But he said, I've learned how to pray through in the Spirit. And if you'll pray through in the Spirit, then 40 days of fasting won't be needed because you're walking a Spirit-led life. So everybody say fasting. So when we talk about fasting, what we're asking you to do, can I give a little definition to it, and we'll break it down a little bit more next week. Um, you know, through this 40 days, I'm just asking you to fast at some point in time. Now, some people, you know, I know this, there are people who want to do a meal a day. There's sometimes that people will do a day a week. There's sometimes that you can give up stuff that you really love. How many of you know, you know, there was, there was one time, you know, I, I had a guy in the church, and please don't get offended at me. He, he told me, he said, he said, you know what? He said, I, I, I want to fast. But he said, I, I, can, I can give up food. He said, I can give up anything. And so I asked him, I said, what is it that you love? Are you all ready? He told me, he said, snuff, smokeless tobacco. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, why don't you fast it? Oh, boy. So he looked at me and he said, you know what, that's that, you know, I am. Well, he was, he was an iron worker. And so he said, that day he decided to fast, that Monday, and I went to work. He said, I went to work, and he said, I'm 280 feet in the air. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I broke out in a sweat. He said, I started shaking all over. And he said, I'm safetyed off, but he said, I can't even hardly stand up. 
And he said, I got him to bring me down. He said, I made it all the way down to the ground. He said, I, I hit, my feet hit the ground. And he said, I wasn't any better. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I went, what in the world's going on? Am I getting sick or what? And he realized that he was having withdrawals from the smokeless tobacco. And he said, just to prove to himself, he said, I went and got a pinch. Everybody say a pinch from somebody else. And he said, as soon as I got it in my cheek, the symptoms left. He said, it proved to me the stronghold. Everybody say stronghold that was in my life. And then he had to conquer it a different way. Come on, y'all, say amen. How many of you know fasting can be all kinds of things? We'll talk about it as we go through this. Let's go to Revelation 2 and verse 1. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. So I don't want to get stuck in the effect of God and just chasing the effects of God. How many of you know we, we live our lives this way? You know, when we have a storm come through or something like that, and there's bad wind, we always say, look at the wind. Well, we don't see the wind. We see the evidence of the wind. Have you ever noticed? You don't see the wind. You can't see the wind. But the wind exists. Come on, y'all. Give me it. All we see is the, is the evidence of what the wind has done. So this is what that verse of Scripture was talking about. When we pay attention to the wind... We're not going to do anything because the winds are always going to blow in your life. Come on, y'all. There's never a good time to fast. Come on, y'all. There's never a good time to get more serious. And how many of you do this? Will you be honest with me right now? How many of you have ever said, I'll start Monday? Come on, y'all. Oh, y'all, come on. Come on, raise your hand if you said, I'm going to start at Monday. Look at that, y'all. I mean, seriously. And then Monday rolls around and you go, ah, maybe Tuesday. <laughs> oh, amen, anyhow. And then Tuesday rolls around and you don't feel good, maybe Wednesday. And then Thursday rolls around and then you go, I'll start Monday. <laughs> and then 2020's here. Who am I talking to? And you still hadn't started. Everybody say this with me. There's no time like the present. It's time, y'all. It's time. If you're dissatisfied with your walk, then it's time for you to change your walk. Come on, y'all. If you're dissatisfied with your prayer life, then it's time for you to shift your prayer life. If you're dissatisfied with God's ability flowing through your life, then it's time for you to shift so that you can be that vessel that God can flow through. Because all we are is a house and a temple for the presence of God. And we can get to that point where we see the miraculous happen every day of our lives. This is why I tell people, when I pray for things, I don't get shocked when it comes to pass. Because I pray to prayer of faith. Everybody say faith. How many of you know that changes things? Listen to this. To the angel of the church at Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. How many of you know it sounds to me like they're doing a darn good job? You know, if you, if you weighed this up against most churches today, do you think we'd have this kind of a, a, of a report card? Have you ever, I mean, think about it, y'all. I mean, I, mean I, I was preaching this one time, and somebody from the congregation said, well, that's not half bad. But how many of you know half good ain't enough? And half bad is not enough. You know, we need to do things better. We need to be better than what we are and do more than what we do. And it says... You have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Y'all, I'm telling you right now, if you hit that, you're at 75%, maybe 80. And this is how, you know, I, I, had somebody, I asked somebody one time, they were having some challenging things in their life. Anybody ever had that? There were some things challenging them. You know, and I asked them, I said, well, how you doing? How are you holding up? And they said, well, compared to so-and-so, I'm doing good. You are not to be comparing yourself to so-and-so. Because so-and-so may be stinky. So we can't compare ourselves to other people. We have to compare ourselves to what God says. 
Listen to verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. Everybody say first love. Now, now let me explain something to you here. If, you, if you've ever experienced the born-again experience, and what I mean by that, we say it this way in church. Let me throw some Christianese on you. Okay? You ever got saved? Everybody say saved. A lot of us in the Bible Belt, we understand that word. And then we understand that if we fall off the wagon and all that kind of stuff, you know. So we understand those things. But if you ever had a true experience with accepting Christ into your life and letting him become the Lord of your life, then you realize that when you had that happen, something in you changed. Can I get an amen? Come on, y'all. How many of you remember how you used to be when you first got saved? The fire that God invested inside of you. I mean, that heat that was released in you. That first love experience that you had with God. Thank God for grace that overcame some of our stumblings. Amen? Because I'm telling you right now, when I first got saved, y'all, I was a clumsy, spiritual, crazy person. I, did, I, didn't have, I had enough of God in me to make me dangerous, but not enough knowledge in His Word to keep me straight. So I believe some crazy things. I mean, I've grabbed people when they went to run from me <laughs> by the head, and their body would go, but their head would stay still. And they were, they were in a drunken state. And I rebuked that spirit of drunkenness off of them. And they sobered up immediately. Immediately. And got saved. Come on, y'all, you follow me? There's an experience, there's something here that we can have in our lives that we're not tapping into now. And the Bible says this, if we're not careful, we can lose our first love. Everybody say first love. And our first love is important to us because that's what sets the fire in place. Do you understand? Guys, I was saved, gloriously saved. Does anybody know what I mean by that? I mean, I didn't have a Christian experience. I, I mean, I, I didn't go to a church and walk down the aisle and shake the preacher's hand. <clears throat> that was not my salvation experience. God met me on the terms and conditions of my contract that I set in place with the pastor. Now, I told you that story, but let me just hit it because there's new people here. You know, I, I told the preacher that came to visit me, who is my father-in-law now, this was when I was a heathen dog. All right, came to visit me and told me about Jesus and asked him if he could pray for me. I blew cigarette smoke in his face and told him he could pray and leave. And he prayed for me and got on his motorcycle and left. Most awesome thing I've ever seen, a preacher riding a motorcycle. But I told him before he left, I said, look, when it's time for me to be saved, God will meet me and tell me himself. I don't need a man to tell me. I need God to tell me. Y'all know my story. I'm driving to see mom and dad a couple weeks later. And God's in my back seat. Speaks to me out of the back seat. And all he said was, Rick, how many of you know I knew? I'm telling you, my, my salvation experience had nothing to do with church. Come on, y'all. Had nothing to do with church. It had everything to do with God's love. So I can tell you the place where it happened. Right on Lynch's River Bridge on 52. Going across to Coward, South Carolina. Crossing the river was where he spoke to me at. And I've had people tell me, I mean, question me and say, well, do you really think God spoke to you out of the back seat of your car? And I told him, I said, well, who else would have been there? Who else even knew that that's how I said God was going to tell me it was time? I don't need no man. I needed God. Y'all, I had to have an experience, something different, because God understood the routine thing don't work. See, I had a glorious salvation, and I didn't get delivered from everything right away. But how many of you know it didn't take me long to figure out the life that I was living was not pleasing to God, and I had to shift some things. Everybody say shift. 
And part of that was I made a decision to get close to God. That means I cut some friends off. I even cut some family off. I heard a yeah. <laughs> I, I cut some people out of my life that I had been in my life for a long time so that I could submit and surrender to God's purpose, His vision, and His plan. And it changed me. But I had that glorious experience where, guys, let me tell you, I fell in love with God. And can I tell you something? I've never lost that love. But I've allowed that love to get watered down by things I think and things that I allow to affect my life and people who talk you out of what you know you're supposed to do. Oh, glory to God. Isn't it funny how everybody knows how you can serve God better than God knows how you can serve God. So let God speak to you during this series. So, you know, the first thing is, get back to your first love. Everybody say first love. This is something, guys, we need that fresh experience. I need that freshness, that newness in my life. Now, let's go a little bit further here because people hate it when we go here, so I'm going to explain this. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. Listen to what he says in verse 5. Remember from where you have fallen. Oh, and here's our most favorite word. Are you ready? Everybody say it with me. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you... The word repent here means to think differently. Everybody say to think differently. This is also what it means. Afterwards, you reconsider. So actually, the word repent means that you change your life. Everybody say change your life. Now see, I like this because I have an opportunity every day to turn a different direction from the things that take me away from God. And how many of you know there are things that are designed to pull you away from God? Oh boy, do I need to preach over here. There are things, everybody say things, that are designed by the world, listen to this, and by the enemy. You, you remember this? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Does everybody follow me? It didn't say they wouldn't be formed. They are formed or fashioned just for you. You need to understand this, but they don't have right and authority over you, to, over you unless you give them permission into your life. You know, I, I was listening to... Um, uh, John, he was teaching on these classes, and he said, um, he got up one morning, he was going to do a meeting. He said, the Holy Spirit spoke to him to fast. And he said, when I, when I went to pick up the pastor or the evangelist or missionary that I was going out with, he said, when I got there, the missionary said to him, said, hey, we're going to have a long day. There's some bread on the table. Why don't you have a little bread and water? Well, he said, the Holy Spirit had told me to fast. Everybody say fast. So he, he said, I thought, well, you know, bread and water is in the Bible. So I guess a little bit of bread and water won't hurt. So he said he cut him a couple of slices of bread. And uh, he said he happened to look down, and there was butter. And he said, huh? Peanut butter. <laughs> and he said, well, that's in the Bible. So I, I guess, you know, look. And he said there was a toaster. So he toasted the bread. Then he put the butter on the bread. And he said, I ate my belly full. And he said, the Lord had told me to fast. And he said, when we got out to the meeting, he said, something happened. And he said, the guy that he went with looked at him and said, you're supposed to preach today or something like that. And he said, and all of a sudden, he said, my mind went, God told me to fast. But I feel. Myself. Now, he was able to accomplish it because how many of you know God is just that good? But there's some things in our life through fasting, guys, that changes. Number one is you'll never move God with fasting. You always move you. You get you out of the way. This is the purpose for it. If you're going to fast a meal, find somebody to bless with a meal. But let me put your word of warning out. Are you ready for this? You know, I, I, I work in, uh, I don't do it anymore, but I used to work in Kentucky Fried Chickens. And this was when I was trying to do those 40-day fast and, and trying to do those. And they would never offer me a meal. Never. When I was eating. Now, this is how sneaky the enemy is. But every time, I went on a fast. 
and I would go to a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Every time, I'm telling you guys, not one time ever did it not happen. The manager would look at me and say, Hey, Rick, you want a two-piece chicken dinner? Now, I'm already in there fasting, smelling Kentucky Fried Chicken, watching the biscuits get cooked. Does everybody follow me? Watching them make the food. Do you understand? And then back then, they just had original. They didn't have the extra crispy and grilled and all. I mean, just original. And I would, I would watch, and every time I went, can I tell y'all something? Can I tell you a secret? I failed. My fast sometimes. God never beat me up. But boy, I did. Come on, y'all. Man, did I ever beat myself up for this. Now, no, I'm talking about stuff for the church. The Bible says here in Revelation, you left your first love. I want to ask you a question because I'm bringing this thing to a close here. What could you do different to make your relationship with God on your end be better? How many of you know God's end is always settled? Our end needs a lot of work. My dog... Let me get natural right now for just a minute. My dog must not like me anymore because I didn't feed him bacon every morning while Pam was gone. And we figured out. Remember I told you to pray for my dog? When Pam come home, he's totally different. I think he was missing her and bacon <laughs> because she cooks him a piece of bacon every morning. And gives it to him. And I didn't. I cook me bacon every morning. And give it to me. Do y'all follow me? So he's, he's laying around moping the whole time I told Pam. I said, I'm, I'm praying the dog lives till you get home. I mean, that's how bad it was. You know, I'm laying hands on him. I mean, I, you know, I got old and I put in my beard. I anointed him with beard oil. <laughs> One morning. Name of Jesus, be healed. And he's just full rotten. That's what his problem is. Guys, listen. You know, when things got back to normal, he's a different dog. She walks up, to, she comes in the house, his tail's wagging, and he's all over the place. And he's just been sleeping the whole time I've been gone. I mean, he, I, I come in, he'll look up at me and say, oh, it's you, boom. His head will, listen, y'all, we can, we can fall away. We can fall away from what God has called us to do. See, the gifts and callings of God, are y'all ready for this? On his side is without repentance. But we're responsible for doing something. Drawing close to God, getting close to him. Well, since she's been home, the dog's sleeping in the bed with us. He didn't even hardly sleep with me. But you know what he does? Now, this is no lie, y'all. He gets in the bed, and he snuggles as close to Pam as he can get to where she can't even move. Am I right, babe? And she'll punch him, and he won't move. I'm going somewhere here. Y'all with me? That's the way our relationship needs to be with God. See, he never has moved. This is a question I want to ask you today. Where are you in that relationship? God's love is real. Come on, y'all. God's love is true. But we need to turn the right direction. So when I, I just want to challenge you today as we start this, and we're starting it today, 40 days. Everybody say 40 days. Four ways. Come on, four ways to get our vision perfect. 20, 20, perfect. I want you to do this. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because I understand there's some people that have medical things going on in their bodies and it's hard for them to fast. What I'm asking you to do is ask the Holy Spirit what you can do. And let Him empower you and help you to do this. Can I tell you something? Those Krispy Kreme donuts out there challenge me every Sunday. But every Sunday for the last three weeks, I've, I've fasted breakfast just because I believe that I'm responsible for responsible for doing it 
instead of just telling you to do it. So what I'm asking you to do, I've already started. Come on, y'all. This is going to break some things in your life. This is going to change some things about you. This is going to move you into that place that you're supposed to be. And then I want you to watch and see what changes in your life. See, there's some things that we're just stuck in a rut doing. You know, I, I told the Lord, I said, God, I don't want my 20 minutes of Bible study, my 20 minutes of worship to just be a routine thing where I'm just playing the same song over and over. How many of you know this song we just played challenged me? And I know it was different. The guy's got a different voice. I know he's got a... But how many of you know he was prophesying? while he was, this was a flow in the Spirit. If you go and look this up, I can't even find it on Spotify. I don't think it's on, I couldn't get it to come up on Spotify. It's only on YouTube because it's a spontaneous worship track is what it is. So I challenge you, if you're having trouble worshiping for 20 minutes, and you don't have to run all over your house and shout and praise and stomp the walls down, make your neighbors mad, do you understand? Put on some worship music. Find you a few songs and just worship in the room. Lift your hands and just say, God, what I'm doing is I'm taking this 20 minutes or do 10 minutes two times a day, whatever you have to do, and just tell him, you know, I I'm setting myself aside just for you. Nothing in the way. No hindrances. This is just me and you. And I surrender. I surrender my life. I surrender everything that I'm going through. I surrender my conditions. How many of you know it's going to change your life? It's going to change your life. And it's going to wake us up. And it's going to take us to a new level. Will you say amen to that? Stand to your feet, if you will. I'm going to close it out for today. Next week we'll go a little bit different. Those of you who are going on cruises, we'll be praying for you. While you're suffering for Jesus. Amen, I'm picking at them. We have several that's going to be on the boat. I excused them from fasting, by the way. Right, like I had to, right? <laughs> Lift your hands, if you will. Father, this has been a little bit different. This is challenging, and I understand that. But God, I'm so ready. We've been on the same level for so long. Yeah, and some of us have been stuck for years. And it's time for us to get unstuck. It's time, God, for a new level of understanding, a new level of anointing, a new level of awareness. So God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit will do the work in us. God, my prayer is that you won't leave us where we are. Don't let us stay the same. But by your Spirit, challenge us to move into more. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody looking around right now. You know, I was talking about being saved a little while ago, and, and I mentioned a born-again experience. Let me explain it a little better. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10 says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. With the heart, you believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So part of that, what, what happens is when we have that born-again experience, what we do is we say, you know what, God, my way is not cutting this thing. I'm ready to do it your way, and I thank you that Jesus died for me. He was raised from the grave for me. I accept that. And I thank you, God, that by accepting that, it changes who I am. If you're here today and you never prayed that prayer, I want to tell you something that's vital and valuable to every believer that's out there. You need to know that God loves you just like you are. And your past is no problem for Him. But your future is everything to Him. 
we all have an opportunity where we can lay the past down and say, God, I need you in my life. I need you more than ever before. And then you can walk in that newness of life and it changes everything. It changes everything about you. It changed everything about me. So if you're here and you never prayed that prayer, would you just raise your hand? I want to lead you in that prayer. I'm going to look around. I'm, I don't want to embarrass you. It's not my job. I don't want to do that, but I do want to give opportunity here. So I'm just giving a, giving a chance, giving that opportunity.